I think the theme is kind of clear. Trying to make up for last time as a... Um, <laughs> that wasn't a good idea. <laughs> okay. That was an interesting start. We go. All it started to get late here, guys. <laughs> Don't worry. We'll we're soon uh, getting back to normal. Yeah, Virtus Pro, 17 minutes. GG. They pushed. Went to Newcastle that game. Uh, in the pre-show or in the pre-game discussion, uh, we actually talked about the Crystal Maiden and if it would be a good counter against the Chen or not. I want to hear your opinion. I'm obviously, it didn't work this time, but what's your opinion on Crystal Maiden versus Chen? And if that is that a good reason to pick Crystal Maiden or Crystal Maiden as a hero in general? Uh, I think it really depends on how you want to lane your heroes. Maybe if you're very worried about the Chen ganking a certain lane and then you, you want to park the Chen, the CM nearby so you can actually always counter gank. In yep. that sense, it could work. But overall, with this game, the CM didn't really do much against the five men. You, you can't really do anything. Like, even if you were uh, to avoid the ganks yeah. from happening. But what, when the five man happens, what is the CM going to do? You need a support that has deep push, you know, for yeah. that. And CM Crystal Nova is not the best. It's the second time today, isn't it? I'm pretty sure that yes. Alliance also took CM to try beat Navi's Chen. And yeah, but I, I remember that game, they also had a secondary usage of the CM. Like, they had heroes that were really used, like, had what? high mana usage in the lane. So well, they also lost. So that, yeah. I was just going to say, it, it's, it's yeah. failed. It probably it's probably better to do Witch Doctor, I guess. I don't know. You know, it didn't feel like the CM was able to do much after. Maybe they only had a early lane planning about how the CM is going to protect the lane against the creeps. But after that, I, I mean, the Roshan fight was quite questionable. I don't know why they contested the Roshan. Yeah. It actually sped up the tempo of VP's push so much because they gave away so much levels and gold, and it resulted in them being able to do nothing. Yeah, it felt like that fight was like. The oh, the, the game, game was over yeah. after that almost. And they had like three sets of necro books running at you, and yeah, what's up? What are you gonna do? I believe uh, Lycan was picked second uh, this game. I mean, the idea for them to contest the Lycan lane was right, but okay. I think after that, what they did, the the biggest problem was the Roshan. Like after the yeah. Roshan fight, the game was like basically so difficult for them. I'm not sure why they wanted to contest that. Juggernaut had a ring of health or something. <laughs> like he didn't even have any items, and they decided, oh, let's go spin. You know what? Teams are really scared in this meta. They're just really scared of like getting behind in like some objective or something. They yeah, feel like I actually thought they might go for Keeper of Light because they like to pick Keeper of the Light. And yeah, it's we against, discussed that as well. Actually, it's yeah. against five men, so I thought they might have actually pulled that out, and he wasn't banned. So it was quite surprising that they didn't do that, since they had the profit. So. If you have Prophet plus Keeper of Light, you have a general idea on how you want to execute your plan. You just keep ratting and you defend your lanes with Illuminate. So I thought that would have been a good idea for them, but I don't know. They didn't go for that. Yeah. So if you're Wings, uh, who's going to play another game right after this one, what do you, what do you, what's your pep talk? Scott? I, I mean, they, they, they played against Vega before that and they did really well. They destroyed yes. Vega just as much as they got destroyed by Virtus Pro. So it's about which side of the, I don't know if I want to say death ball or some, it's about which side of the, it feels like so many of the games at this tournament are like 20 minute one team just like gets carried away and you can't do anything. So it's difficult to decide then if a team loses in that kind of game, like it's not clear they were like much worse than the enemy team. It was just like they suddenly they got into this position where they couldn't do anything. And it's also because everyone is like making a lot of mistakes. So when you make a mistake against a five man lineup, you just like instantly, you feel the game is just lost after one yeah. mistake. Because yeah, like that Roshan, I mean. It well, one mistake and they lost. It doesn't really mean that, oh, Generally. five men is the overall better strategy. Yeah. I still think that the other strategies can work, like go for maybe more ganking lineups or more speed push lineups. I still think those strategies will work. It's well, just that the execution has to be good. L LGD looked like the strongest team in the tournament to me so far, and they haven't really... I mean, they're five men sort of, but it's not like all in push early or anything. They yeah. they play relaxed, slow, pace. They have a very good like overall strategy, very good balance. They have Early game, they have late game, yeah. they have mid game, so they have deep push, they have team fight. They, their draft is very flexible. Like It doesn't mean, oh, they're going to five men and push 15 minutes into the game and try and finish the game. And if they don't finish the game, that's good. They're actually, they don't have those type of draft. Even if they don't do enough damage early game, okay, they'll play slow and go late game. And usually they have two carries, like the mid and their safe lane heroes yeah. are very, heroes yeah. that take a lot of farm. And ROTK is the guy that, whatever, dude, even if I don't have farm, I, I just... You know, I hook shot like mostly on I can work. still make plays. Yeah, I'm yes. still doing something even if I don't have farm. Now we are going to watch uh, Wings again against Complexity this time. Complexity has had one match before this one. They played against Team Liquid. Uh, both of these matches, of course, or all these matches are in Group B. Um, Complexity not very successful against Team Liquid, but with Team Liquid um, 
well, basically finishing off Team Secret in about 20 minutes, uh, which apparently also was kind of brutal, uh, brutal yep. match there. Um, it feels like, you know, that's a loss they can maybe permit themselves. Complexity, I want to hear your guys' thoughts. How are you expecting to see do against Wings here? I, I kind of expect them to be the stronger team overall. Yeah. Yeah. I think they are favorites, but after the games that I've seen in the past two hours, I don't know what's going to happen. <laughs> and I mean, we've seen uh, that anything can happen. So Complexity were very disappointed when they lost against uh, against Liquid. Yeah. I, I think they expected that they they could actually win that. They'd prepared a lot for it. The game seemed like it was quite close for a long time. Apparently, uh, Kuroki got like a solo kill first blood with just a creep. Just a satire. Yeah. yeah, I heard that too. Um, and then he cancelled his TP or something. I, yeah, I overheard a conversation. So, so it's yeah. So it sounds like it was a bit of a disaster for Complexity, and maybe they could like regroup themselves. Warm up game. And, yeah, a lot of the teams have looked rusty in their first game of the tournament. Yeah. So I I would favor Complexity, but then again I I I, I was casting Vega against uh, Wings, and I said I would favor Vega, and I even like Vega draft more, and Wings just decimated them. They, I mean, Wings, in that game, they had a mid bat rider, and it was kind of like the S4 bat rider where he got a solo kill and then he just snowballed and he was killing everyone all game long. So maybe that's what Wings should do in this game because last game they didn't have the bats again. So maybe that's their, their playmaking hero. If you would, uh, Winter, if you would have a uh, fantasy team and you want to pick a player from Complexity, which player would you pick? You mean for my team? <laughs> for your <laughs> fantasy team. Oh, my fantasy. <laughs> Not your real team. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I was thinking I probably want a mid laner, so I'll pick Limp. <laughs> that was my initial thought. That can st you can still pick Limp if you want. Um, I think the key player is Chessie for me. Okay. So I would pick Chessie. I think he he is like a very flexible player. He plays a lot of different heroes, and he's the backbone of the team, from what I can see. The one to w watch out for. Yeah, the one to watch out for. Do you feel like if Wings maybe shut him shut him down, that they have a better sh chance as well? I mean, is it is it even uh, possible? I think it's hard to say like who you want to shut down right now because like the games are just so random and chaotic. I think whoever gets their plan together, whoever executes what they want to do, will win. Okay. Instead of like caring about oh this team is good at this and we try to stop this, just focus on yourself because the day is long. Like everyone is playing very sloppy, so I think whoever minimizes mistakes, focuses on their own game, they'll and execute, they will win the game. Okay, if you want to pick up Limp in your fantasy team, you can go to Vulcan, where you can, of course, uh, get the best fantasy team in the world and try to compete with your fantasy team. So make sure to check that out. We can actually go into the draft, because it's time for Wings versus Complexity, and see uh, which heroes we have for them. I actually really hope, and it's kind of a biased hope, because I don't think it's going to happen, but Complexity is the one team that did it. Cormorana! They picked Cormorana in the qualifiers. Uh, they won I with it. I remember seeing a couple of Cormoranas recently too. I, th I think it was in the qualifiers. Um, it was mostly run to dominate the lane, to pressure the off lane a lot. Five and it's run remaining. very similar to like something like a gyro where you get a few levels, like you're level 7 or you're level 8. You're very strong. You TP and you rotate. And you're trying to get to kills. Pick. And the other thing that it provides for the team is you sort of have a smoke with the hero's ultimate, like the Moonlight Shadow. So you can conserve on your smoke usage early and try to use it as a secondary way to actually catch out the enemy team. Well, I'll tell you one thing about Murana. We saw a Puppy playing a support Murana in that previous... <laughs> Jung uh, jungling? Was yeah, jungling and like dealing with the enemy jungle and stuff like that. And Liquid beat them in 20 minutes. The Murana didn't... I mean, he was interfering a lot early on. Like he got quite a bit done, but he didn't make any kills. He didn't make any ganks. He was useless like after. Right? After, yeah. yeah. Exactly. Very hard to do anything. Remaining. But that's a support slash roaming Murana. Maybe Cormorana can do more. Yeah. I have my hopes up, but yeah, it's a very situational pick if you even want to go for it. Yeah, but the I thing guess. is, like, whatever the core Mirana does, like, there's always another core that does it better. Yeah. So it's hard to justify, apart from maybe some situations where you want to utilize the Moonlight Shadow for to counteract some, something like maybe a Spectral, spectral Horn. Like, so you want to use it to deal with that. Otherwise, m most of the time, I would say that there's always going to be another carrier that can actually do what you're doing better. So the really interesting thing about this draft so far is that Wings are Virtus Pro. Five seconds apparently. remaining. Yes. Um. Now, the, the <laughs> remaining two <laughs> teams that we have going up against... Did they change the schedule? Yeah, <laughs> I can't. I no. I could imagine though, because Virtus Pro just come off a loss. Uh, they are like these are the only two teams the complexity is still playing, and they're not playing on the other stream anymore. So I can imagine Wings said, you know, we want a break, and VP said, hey, we're okay to swap because then we can go to bed earlier. 
uh, and they just come off a win, so they might need less right. of a break because of that. So, uh, you know, it's all for the better of the schedule, as we are still behind schedule. Uh, that we are catching up slightly to the other stream, though. By the way, which has got uh, right now going on Vega versus Secret still happening. Right, but basically, ignore all the pregame analysis we did because it's different teams playing. Different <laughs> teams playing. Oh, the ice, the ice cold. I will not make the same quote-unquote joke, which wasn't actually funny. I see, I see <laughs> that I did before. So right now, basically, all right, what ha what's happening right now? VP opened the drop with DP, and to deal with DP, you want to have burst. So you want to instantly kill her so she doesn't get her ghost running around killing all your team. So they have Tusk to initiate, and then Ice Blast to follow, so you make sure Death Prophet dies. Yeah, very important. Otherwise, those healing heroes can just save yep. the Death Prophet. So yeah. basically, can most of the time with Death Prophet, you want to have a defensive hero to keep her alive. Um, there's still Venge, there's still Dazzle, there's still Oracle. Like all those heroes obviously get countered by the Ice Blast. But yeah, they're gonna go for the Venge, which has much more back. synergy with uh, the ultimate of DP because you can reduce the armor of the enemy team. So even if you want to go Roshan and whatnot, it's a lot more easier compared to the Oracle and the Dazzle. Do you think it's a carry Venge? Mm. Okay, we can't really say yet, I guess. Um, I think Complexities turn maybe with bad. DP I would favor getting a, uh, using Venge as a support more, personally. But carry Venge would obviously still work, and it's VP, you know, yeah, so exactly. yeah. you can't they really count that out. I, that. I do feel like it's, it's a bit strange to like take your one and two position heroes in the first two picks. Ten yeah, but it's Venge is a... It doesn't have to be a flexible yeah. hero, yeah. so it doesn't mean that it's gonna be. Five seconds. Remain. I mean, I understand your point. You don't want to show your two cores. Yeah. Too early. But yeah, but but I also understand your point, you which is that because the Avengers isn't guaranteed, it's not gonna yeah. give away that much of a draft advantage to. Then we'll get banned, most likely. One of those heroes that is in high contention, so the yeah. chance that it gets banned in the second phase is pretty high. Uh, it seems like Complexity have just watched Virtus Pro again three. <laughs> uh, no Lycan. Okay, so they need uh, other pushing heroes. What do VP play? Shadow Shaman. Shadow Shaman. Jakiro. Why are we not seeing Jakiro Winter? Tell us. Um, for me, the hero's issue is like, he can't really pressure early. You need like Ten some specific dual lanes to utilize the hero to pressure. That's okay. like, he's not as flexible as Five like a bench pick or a remaining. dazzle or shot. He can't walk around the map. Yeah, he can't, and he can't gank early. That's like he's very the other slow. problem. For a flying hero, you know, it doesn't make sense. So I don't know. I would expect the Beastmaster maybe. I, I think maybe a call Jakiro. Uh, I think it's much. We have seen uh, in the previous patch, uh, Ice as Ice play a really fun Jakiro offlane. MVP as I well. I mean, plus seven yeah. damage now as well. He could do that even better. Yep. And Jakiro is a hero that beats TA 1v1 mid. Very heavy. Yeah, because we see TA so often. Virtus not that often. Not, not, not that often. Yes. <laughs> that, was, that was not meant seriously, in case that wasn't clear. But we haven't seen Templar Assassin at all today. No, I don't think so. No. They take the Gyro, which I think is also yeah. partially a block pick. You know, the main reason is because TA loses the lane to DP, and we see DP so many games. Yeah. So it's very hard for TA to show herself right now. We see DP many times, but uh, Death Prophet, I believe, is 0 5. Today? Uh, Are you today? It for us? I know that it was like that about one and a half hour ago when Five I saw Nahaz. Shout out to Nahaz for all his stats that he does throughout the day. But he, he tweeted about that, that Death Row was indeed 0 5 in today's right. it, games. It definitely won for Liquid against Secret. Okay, I'll tell you so that. Okay, so that, yeah, like I said, it was, it was yeah. a while ago. Our question is hour. answered. Sven is the carry, Bench is the support, so you want to use the swap to keep Death Prophet safe. So you're sacrificing a support instead of a core bench. It's also really, I mean, they, they have a really strong push already there with the exorcism, the so god strength. Uh, so they need what, Chronosphere with the DP ultimate? <laughs> Ten seconds it's, uh, I mean, it's a possibility. They need an off lane that doesn't you know, need too much farm, basically. Five initiate Maybe even a crawl would, would work for them. So for complexity, they're looking for um, possibly their mid hero. Uh, and I mean, I've seen them using Tusk as off laners, but recently I think they've been using it on support more. And very few teams actually use Tusk off lane anymore nowadays. Yeah, it's mostly it's support like for... The everyone. same hero, even if you do it a core position or a support. So you don't think um, Virtus Pro could go for Beastmaster because it's a bit too... needs too much farm? Oh, it's still fine. Beastmaster doesn't need too much farm. Just need levels and then you're fine. Yeah, because I think Beastmaster fits the, the plan really well. I think like that Necro timing could just be like, okay, death push. Um, death profit push. <laughs> it's just that in the laning phase, I prefer to have something like Void because Void can actually do more in laning phase. Uh, yeah. against the gyrocopter because like Void tries in a situation where if the enemy doesn't have a lot of lockdown he can't kill you in one shot or do a lot of damage you just time walk and you laugh and haha yeah. I, I backtrack all your damage so like Ten AA plus gyro is not a dual 
hero combination that can actually kill you. Yeah, that's true. So they got bad heroes. Because when I play Void, I like to play against like A so I'm I'm really happy. <laughs> How about still the Visage? Oh, never mind. Little Earth Spirit, just as dirty. Complexities turn so, uh, Complexity is going for their off lane Brewmaster. Like we see Swindle I mean, quite a, a few times before this, and VP goes for Earth Spirit for Lil Such. Do you feel like there's a, there's a chance that Virch Pro will go for an aggressive remaining. lane here? I mean, they've got the double stun and the silence and the another stun Five from their spirit as well. Remaining. Or is it too too greedy and uh, too tricky to no. do that They're again? They're just going to focus because what they need to do is uh, secure their lanes, get levels on Earth Spirit, yeah. and go for that timing push they have when they have all their levels. They're just going to group up. Basically, the plan is simple. They're going to have Venge and Earth Spirit to keep the Death Prophet safe when she's sieging, and they have Warcry as well. All the heroes provide something in terms of defensive capabilities for the DP to make sure she doesn't die in the team fights right away. Earth Spirit picked four times, won four times, 100% win rate. Yep. Good, good AKA hero. Verge Pro wins. Pretty good hero. Good hero. You know? Yes, yeah. it's, stats say so. It's getting banned all the time against Liquid, but yeah. <laughs> against everyone else, apparently people Ten are like, whatever, we'll just leave it. So Complexity actually might also do gyro mate because they are the only one of the Five only few teams that actually does that. Like, yeah, like they go for the the rocket. Do you, plus, do you, do you think it's good? Uh, I <laughs> don't really like it, but you know it's their specialty. So so they have a lot of bursts right now to take Beauty's down the DP. OD plus you know snowball. They just need to get it right, like execution right. Snowball into ice bus and OD ultimate. Then the DP is like removed instantly, deleted. Yeah. And OD was a big part of, um, I didn't get to see it, but Alliance, when I was watching previously, it looked like they were doing really, really well in their game against Spirit. And then all of a sudden, Spirit and beat them. They lost. And, and I think it had a lot to do with the OD, which could have just like burst down a hero. And they, they realized they could actually fight. And, and at that point, it was like, okay, we're just going to push that. It had a lot of uh, to do with the Puck dying really? without buyback, too. Yes. Like, he okay. was just so cocky. But, but he died to the OD, right? No, he got, uh, he got rot or Doom or something. Uh. Then he died. So okay, end of story. Enough. Well, speaking of raw, do you think Beastmaster is maybe the pick here? Yep, it's still good. I it has a lot of uh, synergy with the heroes. Like yeah. anything that can allow them to initiate is fine and doesn't require a lot of resources because Sven and Death Prophet would eat up a lot of the map already. So they need an off lane and they can initiate and doesn't need a lot of space. They need a space making off lane mostly. Yeah. Does Centaur take up too much space? Yeah. I mean, is this kind of a DK if I was hero, but he does need a blink dagger, uh, which takes a while perhaps, too long in this patch? Yeah, I think Centaur is probably least likely to happen. Like they need something like Beastmaster Clock. Or maybe even like um, Slada is still open. Like Slada yeah. can fit very well with Death Prophet, and he doesn't need the blink as much as the. He Centaur. also plays. He used to play quite a lot of Phoenix. Do you think they? Could oh pick yeah, Phoenix? yeah, Phoenix, Phoenix. It's quite good. Like yeah, actually, quite good. yeah, I like Phoenix. Too. And needs uh, needs only levels. Like yeah. you gotta look at a hero that only Space needs levels creator. rather and than. Odi and Jar are not fine. really good at right clicking the egg, and I mean. Yeah, those all the options we mentioned are really good for their lineup. It depends on how they want to play their game what type of lanes they are looking forward to mm -hmm. and you know it's just basically how they want to plan their game all of those picks would work for them i'm actually really liking the phoenix now i mean you don't want to group around exorcism you don't want to group around like sven or earth spirits ulti like like phoenix is maybe a bit more defensive and beastmaster is more aggressive because yeah. it allows you to play you can go in and raw instead of just phoenix is more like you want to play the waiting game you want to wait for the enemy to jump your core and then you come in with the egg to counter initiate so it really depends on how they feel they want to play the game. Yeah, and actually, give, I mean, given that Virtus Pro actually like to be aggressors, maybe it is more leaning to, toward the beast. Like, you know, they want to be, we, we saw the previous game, they just want to go and push and yeah. win the game. You know, take matters in your own hands instead of just waiting. Yeah, which, I mean, honestly, in this kind of environment where, okay, yeah, they take the beast. In this environment where games just end so quickly, you don't want to be waiting, I think, unless you're LGD and you're just really confident. <laughs> unless you're LGD. Yes. <laughs> Because what timing are we looking for for the teams, by the uh, way? Uh, I think it's more on, more on complexity. They need to be able to win their lanes and then use their... Because they have very good team fight. They have Gyrocopter Cooldown, they have Panda Split, they need, and the Ice Blast. They need to use their ultimates and you know get their levels so they can actually make the defense on the towers early. Yeah, it's usually like that in this kind of setup. Virtus Pro want to push, so complexity needs to get good lane stage because if they're behind when the push starts, that's it. Yeah, yeah. basically their, their lineup is built around getting their levels so they can use their ultimates to defend the push. Okay, we're going to find out if that landing stage indeed uh, goes well there for Complexity. It is time for our second to last game, our eighth game of day one here in Minsk. So over to LD and Luminous. Thank you very much, Shiver. Lumi, are you excited? Are you ready? We've had a last minute switch up and which game is happening. I guess Wayne's get a breather, but VP are not going to be an easy opponent here. I'm excited if you're going to be as salty as you were. 
<laughs> well, they're like, the they're like, I understand how you think, and I and I understand. And I think how you're you great, think. and you're wonderful too, Lumi. Are we gonna be like that? <laughs> I guess I don't think I. I that don't think panel I needs it. some spice. Yeah. We need shots. We gotta get you back. Dude, we gotta there, walk right? up there. Be like, no, Winter, you're get wrong. the flamethrowers and machine guns. Uh, it's out. ready. I mean, let's go. Come it's on. Fueled up. Seriously, this is not a love fest. Yep. This is Dota, and somebody's gotta lose every game. Every game. That is true. Uh, other than that one time in China, when my monitor just fell down. <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't there one time that like oh two teams my. drew a game in China? Um, I there, think was the, there was the yeah. WCA game last year. Yeah, like it was like a, it was so long that the map started breaking, and then yes. I think the servers started seconds. lagging, and the players just decided to call it a, a one-one series and go to deciding game number three. <laughs> they both forfeited. Is what they did. So, hopefully, this game will have an actual winner, and we get underway. VP Radiant Sight Complexity on the Dire. Okay, no joke though. I know that we're really, really late, but I I'm ready for an 80-minute game and the map starts breaking. Like, my body's physically ready for that soon. Okay. All right. I'm glad to hear that. Okay. You're, you're healthy. You're yes. ready to go. The battle You got begins. some sleep. Hopefully yes. the players did too. Swindle Melons, I had a chance to talk to at length after game one, and he basically attributed it to just some tilt after the way the Lady Sage went. So they are going to gauge her off the map, but the Stormbolt is going to catch out too. And VP quickly collects the first blood. Four heroes moving forward and looking for Hanskin. This light is likely a second kill if FNG can get the Magic Missile off. Does connect another roll forward. Lil, make it two. Well, the question is, is Complexity tilting right now? Because, you know... That's why they lost uh, the first map, right? Against. Uh... Yeah, I mean, that's a slightly. I would say that's a less tilting way to die than someone getting solo killed <laughs> by <laughs> how a Satter. How many times are you going to mention it? Well, I mean, you know, he, he was mentioning it too, so. And then he canceled his TP back then, which was even the, the bigger issue. But <laughs> obviously, not a great start. Yeah. yeah. So uh, we do see the complexity duel off uh, aggressive lane again. Featuring Chessie here. I don't know. Uh, Gyro, pretty good offensive hero. Once again, Swindles. I think Swindles just want to play the safe lane now, so he throws his teammate in the off lane. He's, he's doing to pretty paraphrase good. him, he said, I'm not a very good off lane player, so I play really greedy and my team makes space for me. It was basically right. what Swindles said during that break. Oh, at least he's honest. Yeah. Yeah. And generally, he does get more farm priority than most, you know, traditional off laners. So that's the one thing I, I, I do really like about Swindles. Like outside the game, he's definitely not afraid to speak his mind. Yeah, and you know, it, it, it's not like, as much as he can have strong opinions, it's not like he, he thinks that he's a perfect player by any means, yeah. so. I pr it's a refreshing, honestly. It's, it's very good to, to hear these uh, refreshing opinions, as opposed to like, other players that's too afraid to share their strats or whatever, you know. Like, I don't want to tell you. Yeah. I'm not sure if it's quite a strat, but uh, <laughs> the team does tend to play around it. So, in the end, Tusk... Brewmaster, but up against a, a very tanky hero in the spend with a vent vacuum up. I imagine no Not one is kill lane. No one's really gonna kill each other, especially if Swindle gets like an early stick. Uh, in the side shot. Oh, not again. So Are we gonna see more aggression here from VP? No dire vision of this one. Yeah, it's an easy roll in, right? It depends if Limp's gonna use There's his the roll. Okay, he's dead. Oh, he's yeah. Astral. Siphon. Oh, does that go through Ash? I guess so. Oh, keeps on sucking. Now the shards okay. trap. Well done. And meanwhile, top lane looks like Swindle may go down. Ooh. Does he have any evasion? No, it doesn't look like it. G gets the trade in the mid lane, but ends up being a one for two around the map. Yeah. At least Limp didn't die. Like, he's on a hero that cannot afford to die at all. Not exactly uh, worse than DP at coming back. Oh, yeah, definitely. I guess you have a tiny bit of AoE from the OD, but it's not very reliable. So. Yeah. Yeah, you asked for yourself in the middle of a <laughs> creep camp. <laughs> Easy gold. <laughs> hope, hope to hit you know, a couple of creeps. So Brewmaster getting good farm, Gyro getting good farm, but all three of VP core, VP's cores off to a hot start. The bounty room, he grabbed top, it looks like by the Earth Spirit. I, I think Complexity has that kind of lineup where you're allowed to go behind, you know, 5k go or so, mm -hmm. and you still come back. And that's kind of what we saw, right? When Complexity was losing the early game in the last map they played. Once Brewmaster gets the Blink Dagger running, now you even have Call Down to back it up. You have such an insane team fight that you, you can just follow but behind. But not by mid nice. once again, Limp oh! caught out, but there's the Snowball okay. gonna dodge the Rolling Boulder. Maybe they've got a chance now. Hanskin though being pursued as the Death Prophet works her way in. Another nuke about to cool down. Astro it looks like he's gonna tank it and right. Hanskin will go down. But, does match to save Limp on the OD. 
Yeah, and it was a three hero rotation as well. Pretty good stuff. They got a support. And Squindle's getting a ton of levels up top and then farm, so. He's good. He's good. Melee on melee. Generally, this is a, a matchup the Brew will be quite happy with. Yeah. I am surprised the lack of uh, Orb of Venom in this melee to melee. There's a lot of. Yeah, actually, that is quite odd. Yeah, especially on, on the Brewmaster, right? You couple your slow with the clap and. The and oof. if he tries to trade with you, then he's often missing. Yep. And you're not always going to have something to cleave onto. Exactly. Yeah. From. That's I good. Agree. I would like to see it, but I guess Swindle's going to just rush for those bigger items here. So Death Prophet off to a good start. 24 and 6 has had, got, had a lot of help in the lane, and well, it has been rewarded with a very early farm. This is the most annoying thing about a hero like Earth Spirit. Like, you know he's there. He's just standing in the river, but you actually can't you go in the lane. If you don't have a ward on him, you know he can't be your lane. Yeah. Like, that's pretty much how it goes. And and if you go in the lane, you just die. So, you know, very few heroes in Dota could do what Earth Spirit is doing right now. Um, really using his fog well here at the nighttime phase. It was just out of vision as Pit Muckle was showing us. But Hanskin is also can't be mid, so it's a 2v2. But it's definitely VP the aggressors, and they are going to kick onto Hanskin. Now the exorcism gets deployed. He's going to roll back to the creep wave, but in doing so, they open up the tower to a lot of heavy harassment. All right, so interesting out. is that uh, G is actually leveling up Siphon. Most of the DP I've seen today is leveling up the Crypt Swarm. The Crypt Swarm first, yeah. So I, I wonder um, what was the kind of the thinking process in terms of why he's leveling up the Siphon in this game. Continues to siphon as the OD Astral goes, and then we'll back off. Exorcism about to end Ooh, low nice with block. a very short roll. Does get blocked out, but again, the siphon's going. G has the overextend in here. May end up going down to the orb auto techs. A lot of damage coming out. Has another siphon, has the stick charges, but Swindles hot in pursuit. If he could just run him down, he's got the ultimate. Sharks? Don't tell me that G is just going to walk away. There's the roll. Brings in the entire squad, Sharks? but they're still out of range. There's the charge. G's going to just wiggle around them and then silence there, but finally they get the banish off with that. There's the setup stun onto Swindle. He heads to the north. He's getting the siphon again. They just can't kill this death prophet. The ghost lady is too spooky for complaint. Complexity turns with the nuke, head skin tagging some heavy damage. Creeps are even What's here. Happening He's already right journeyed around the world and back again. Magellan ain't got nothing on G. And it looks like he will walk away <laughs> scot free after leading three complexity heroes on a merry goose chase literally halfway around the map. All right. That's. Uh, Okay, not exactly. I think that's tilting, Lumi. <laughs> that is, that really is tilting. tilting. Uh, meanwhile, it looks like FNG and DK Fobos chain suns imperfectly, but gets a kill. Anyways, good stuff there. Yeah, I just want to see an instant replay of that chase. Yeah, we, I, I do too. Although it might be too long to fit in one instant replay. Z Freak gets rolled on, gets stunned up. He's also going to go down. Nice access being hit up. Hey, okay. Okay, now they got him. All right, let's see if Loki can get out. Handskin has the snowball ready. Roll him. Has it? Roll him. Has it? Very fire. Roll him. Oh, there you go. He's got the vision, and one more right click will finish the job. But Exorcism already out, and G again going to work with the Siphon. Just going to run down Jesse. Kills off the Gyro. This Death Prophet has already gotten utterly out of control. See, games like this which me think that, you know, why don't why don't we see Siphon Max more, right? Uh, I, yeah. It's it's definitely a much more situational thing, but... Well, it feels like a lot of the effectiveness has come down to the Earth Spirit's rotation. Yes. Like, if there's not a really strong ganking support who's making great plays, then maybe it's not effective. Yeah, when you're making those dives happen, like if you have a support Spirit Breaker or if you have a Dark Siren team like Surge in, just max Siphon, man. It's just so much more damage. It really is. I'm, I'm becoming a believer with every passing moment this, this game, at least. But maybe they can finally get some vengeance. G, beautiful shards trap there by Hanskin. Buys them some time. The orb hey, Siphon. slowly <laughs> come out. And, well, see you later. Hanskin still wants to party. He's a little mad that he wasn't invited, but G just walks away. And Siphon. Actually, he's going to turn. Oh, he doesn't have, doesn't have the mana. Looks like. Oh, no. Actually, he does. Yeah. Oh, uh, maybe he just got the charge back? Yeah, he may have just gotten the charge. Looks like it just refreshed. Yeah. Still, while this was happening, VP were not laying idly. They, they have Dyer's been pushing top in top, top FNG grabbing attack. the casual Bassy. That is... I mean, there is a Sven and a Beastmaster in this game. I feel like we've... <laughs> it's just been the Death Prophet show, but... 
They have a lot of other strong pushing heroes getting their early levels in farm. Yep. Meanwhile, looks like they're going to set up a gank here. Magic Missile laid things out and maybe Beastmaster Roar. That should be First stun connects. Window, yeah. now the roll comes through. A follow up stun and then the silence. Yep. Kick back and kicked back to the well. In fact, in the end. So. And that's an important kill considering that I think that's the only way that complexity is going to make a comeback. It's the Blake Dagger. Yeah. And maybe the Ice Blast. Which perhaps we're going to see G surrounded <laughs> by three heroes and just sucking away. Oh, Dio committed. Okay, finally. They killed the, the little bugger. My god, that was way harder than okay. it should have been. Can we see a turn here? Silent out of mana at this point. A good eye strike should get the kill. Take down to earn. No, he's. Shards? Yeah, barely gonna they survive the catch. Silent may also drop to the call down. BP spicing it up here, giving up their two biggest cores. All right, Gyro's also in the Quick game. Quick succession. You know, yeah, I've just been watching the, the DP game. Uh, none of these heroes really matter, it feels like. It's taken such big commitment, though, from Complexity. And good news, they have Ice Blast. This could be a game changer. Denied! Yep. Uh, this was Complexity's first pick, which I found that extremely surprising. I mean, I guess you see the Death Prof, you're like, oh, they might be running a pretty heavy push strat. You know, let's get counter push nice and early. Yep. But do you feel like they they that have the lineup to really take advantage of Ice Blast? I mean, it definitely shuts down Siphon, right? That's true. Or at least the healing aspects of Assuming it. Assuming you hit it. Dire yeah. Are fortified. Their setup is, Dire I would say, mediocre. Is under yeah. Snowball shards and clap. Tornado shard, uh, tornado ice blast. Dire's you know? middle tower yeah. Has fallen. <laughs> uh, you gotta I guess that works. dispel it. You Technically, know. that does work. Yeah. All right. Little rolling in here. Swindow, can he get off the. No, oh, he can't. can't afford it. Well, he's actually being healed up. Snowball. Snowball. This might be a turnaround. Silent, not able to finish him off, and now Silent gets trapped. The ODs even joined the fight, and well, because the entire team is busy trying to deal with Silent, they blast him off the map with an Ice Blast, but it comes at the cost of a Brew Split, and oh, they need a little bit more. They want low, but he's, he's already gone. Rolls away with the boulder, kicks one back, and then all the while, the other boulder hunts him down, but he will make it up. All right, what what is OD turning the staff into, of Wizardry into? I mean, Atos, what do you think? I think they need a force against a Siphon and the Sven, right? Could be a force. And the Beastmaster Roar is... Uh, you want a force against that I team. think Pip Muckle is tilting too. Yeah. This game is tilting for many people. It's hard to, uh, you know... Pip Muckle, don't feel bad. It's hard to keep up with like a game like this where there's so much random stuff fallen. happening. Lumi, you've, you've, got, you've grown soft. I've gone soft. In your old age. Yeah. The Lumi I, I used to know would have like ran up there. <laughs> Thrown him out of the building, said, don't come back, pack your bags, go home. I like Brendan and man, group hug. <laughs> Girl, you're great. I think you're good. You're wonderful. <laughs> All right. Good stuff. So Dyer's Sven has gone into the Dominator build, attack. and you can see he's stacking Ancients over on the Radiant side. It hasn't been a whole lot of downtime as the score is already 13 to 6, but they tried to make a move on him. Looks like he will successfully escape. And yeah, big Ancient stack building up. So VP, just every death profit ult, go for a big team fight. Is that yeah. pretty much the, the game plan here? I mean, I, I don't feel like they even need a death profit ult. It feels like if they get a good pick, they could chase for more. The biggest issue is still no blank on the brew. Yeah. And that was your safe lane farmer. Like he's their least farm core now after all the deaths. He's probably gonna die here again. He's farming very aggressively. He does have a little bit of backup, but Beastmaster Roar goes on Chessy. Uh oh, Necro, that Necro one. Book. It's uh, enough, not gonna I think. be enough. Close, very close. The okay. four. Melee creep marching in, trying to finish the job, and Phobos so oh. far is fine. Jukes the creep. And no Michael the Warrior skill. gives up. Yeah. Dyer's that warrior threw in the towel. I know he's being chased and all, but you know. Alright, limp is fine, I think. No, that's a stun, that's a silence. Where is it? Oh no, he misses. It doesn't matter. Snowball right. okay. coming through and Death Prophet ult already going. Has the Yule Scepter ready. Complexity. Forced to back away, Hanskin caught out, will be finished off. G working his way right through the Brewmaster split, who's now oh, he's dead. He's in a headlong like retreat, and he gets swapped back in. Yep. He walks right into their team. There's the Siphon. Okay, they gotta win the this ultimate fight. GG, the basically. Buyback. Chessy, no, no call down here. So they have to do it just with right click. Silent walking onto Limp, drops the hammer, but the hammer actually has a rubber cover. So I, mix <laughs> off. I like that a lot. I'm expecting a GG call, because they just and die back to OD. This is looking beyond brutal. Yeah. 
So, you know the sickest thing about Siphon is, oh, by the way, it also gives you sight as uh, you cannot try to juke his uh, trees when you're being siphoned. As uh, I believe the, the Brewmaster or somebody, Gyro, tried to do that. Alright, the, the fight is still happening, by the way. Silent's gonna probably die here. Uh, I say that though, he's just walking away. He finally goes down to the Ice Shard. I, I just see a constant stream of complexity here as walking and dying at this point. Yes. 20 to 10. It's almost a thousand gold advantage per minute being accrued right now by VP. And that's I mean, where do you really chalk it up to? Is it just the, the, the lane mid with yeah. the constant ganks from Earth Spirit? It, it's just this, like, Earth Spirit plus Siphon stuff. I, I, like, I don't even feel like the OD did anything wrong, really. Like, you have to sit in the lane. Yep. Uh, maybe it's it's complexity needed to rotate a hero there to help out. Maybe they needed a... Did they have a hill ward at the beginning? I don't think so. No. I, maybe they, they needed didn't. to ward a bit more, but... Well, I, uh, honestly, Earth Spirit just comes in from so far away that... It's like you're almost bound to get caught anyway. It's you... oftentimes they know the Earth Spirit's there, but it's like, what are you supposed to do? Not farm? I, I yeah. think you need a. Especially on OD. It's not like yeah. it's a hero you can sack. You need just somebody to babysit him as. The thing is, like, A is not the best babysitter, and Tusk, I think he was there half the time. He also wasn't really doing that much. Maybe just not banking on the level of aggression. Maybe you just ban Earth Spirit. It's. I, after seeing the, at least versus certain teams, the MMY Earth Spirit, absolutely ridiculous as well. I mean, look look at little of this game. Like, it's... Yeah. The, the top Earth Spirit players seem to be just get, winning games almost single-handedly for their team. See, FNG, look at Roldan. They actually had a ward scouting the smoke, but when you, when I don't you say, think they were looking. When you say top Earth Spirit player, like, I just, like, find that as a Kappa statement, because... Because Jerex? No, because, like, the... The hero's so broken, like, how can you not be a top Okay, but player? there's a difference between a good one and a great one. Okay, so like, the fact that he missed... Like, tu like Tusk last patch. Fair, fair, yeah. Like, Tusk was a Tusk would still be a good pick, but some teams are just a... You have 11s, you have your Jiraxes. Right, yeah. like, it's like 11 just single-handedly throwing e home on his back so many times. Oh, they're stealing the ancients. This is ugly. Okay. But yeah, yeah I'm, not, I'm not saying that, you know... Yeah, our spirit, I, I is, our spirit is only good if you're absolutely but masterful. But. I feel like Earth Spirit is dispatched Tusk a little bit stronger because he could single-handedly make those ganks happen, like in the mid lane, and yeah. he could roam around so effectively. The first split happened because of the Earth Spirit as well. But I saw some Earth Spirits earlier today that really didn't get anything done. Like, uh, But that's the thing, is even if you have a bad start, he could still be hugely impactful later yeah. on. I think, like, we gotta keep uh, keep in mind that this is the beginning of the patch, right? As maybe the patch rolls around for a couple more weeks where these players are practicing their Earth Spirit. I think the hero is strong enough to warrant a ban. Yeah, quite likely, I imagine, there will be at least one balance patch before the Major. Yeah. So, I think there's, what, oh, MDL, I hope so. MDL in a week or so, and then that's pretty much it before the Major, so that gives... Man, it's so fast! Valve like a couple weeks to figure out what they want to do. Things are happening so fast. We're all getting old. Complexity is losing this game. You're getting soft. We're all getting old. I'm not getting soft. Oh. This is only day one. I'm saving uh, the flame yeah. for, for, for the main <laughs> stage, you know? So uh, maybe tomorrow. With the amount, of, the amount of ice and snow and general cold that is here true, in yeah. you're going to need some extra fuel, Lumi. Yeah. Keep us all warm. They're just marching down the top lane. Death Prophet ult available. Aether Lens, the grab from G. Make that Siphon better. That is a great Death Prophet item. Saw it earlier today. Absolutely ridiculous. It doesn't It doesn't seem like that crazy, but then you just you see it in action. Oh my god. There's no escaping. It's like a, it reminds me of last patches, like the, the glimmer on the Lashrak. It's like, it's like, what? It's a little bit weird, but you know. And then you see the truck running at you. Oh, oh no, he they had like blink, three responses. And the greedier clap gets silenced off the bat. Does manage to survive for the time being, but it comes to the cross of the OD, and Chessy gets forced back anyway. The damage coming off of BP, absolutely immense. They have managed to pop the bruise, but Silent will drop to this. The kick magnetized back and forth, and seems that's it. Lil now on the run. The the ult's still going fairly strong here from the Panda, but it's going to wear off. And they don't have a whole lot of follow -up. The Magnetize continues. They will manage to secure an additional kill and hand skill on the Tusk. And that's the big oh, Blink wow. Dagger initiation. Another kick up the hill. You question Lil Hardy, you softy. And he's proven you wrong. My god, that was so fast reaction on, on the silences. Yeah. And then I think... That, that silence Yules, they were ready. Yeah.
And he tried for the clap, which VP is never, they were never going to let that happen. And that's the game, right? Like, you just lose Rax and you just lose the game here. Because I don't think Complexity has a lineup that could come back from a Rax deficit. I, I am averaging like 20 minute games right now for the last the last two. Yeah. If, if this one ends soon. Well, we did see the game where, you know, against Secret, VP was ahead early as well. So. Maybe could be a that turnaround. Dot. That's a nice, well placed call down. And FNG with the swap gets F and gets G also caught ice out. Blast. Ice Blast is gonna connect, but the Yule Scepter was deployed. Actually, might allow them to set up for round number two. There They're turning it on go. G. There you go. Have gotten over eager. <laughs> they get punished. That was a funny kick. Still, Death Prophet is 5k up on the enemy gyros. Roche They'll need up. a little bit more to get back. In. I mean, they they're gonna get Aegis uh, on top of this. And do you give it to Swindles here so he could blink and clap, put out a lot of havoc, and then ult on the second life? I, you still only get one first, but I think you give it to one of the carries. Okay. I think Swindles just has to be a, a, like it's just you gotta get the ult on, you know, yeah. rather than just just ult. blink ult instead of blink clap. Although. I felt like they reacted so fast that he didn't. He couldn't. That cast particular anything. one was yeah. just VP quick reactions, but in general, like they have a lot of ways to punish you when you try yes. for the clap. Uh, I mean, the the split oh, animation is actually so long. Yeah, like you can get, you can get easily get a magic missile off the Earth Spirit kick or silence the. Yeah, the, the silence. Even. The silence is pretty instantaneous, right? Like yeah, on, on the pullback. Swindle sweeping around, and it looks like he wants to go for the backstab here. It's right as the Earth Spirit. Kicks after Hanskin, who's up on the cliff, and then is going to jump away. Swindles engaging in the river. Perhaps this is the big turnaround complex you're waiting for, but no! They walked into Silent and his Sword of Destruction. That is going to hurt. Lil might get picked off here, though, on the Earth Spirit, but Silent Radiance for now attack. survives. The gyro's down. They Dyer's have lost two. I just can't believe how much damage the Sven did. We've hardly even seen him engaging in these fights. Now hunting the Earth Spirit, or the uh, Earth Panda down, I should say. Well, the Earth Spirit's busy cleaning up complexity. Can he blink out of time? Does manage to sweep away, but Silent, they're on the chase. And Swindle's dead. dead. Yeah. That looked like a really good initiation from complexity up until they the grouped Sven. up on top of Silent. <laughs> yeah. I mean, they ran into a, a Sanity's Eclipse and a call down, and they still wanted to fight Radiance through the Panda Tower Ultimate. So I, I don't need, I don't know how Complexity can win fights anymore. Uh, I guess you could find VP one by one and get them, but... And they're itemizing in a way where Complexity are going to be hurting a bit for the damage here. We're seeing a BKB coming out for the spend. G's just tanking up. F and G, perhaps even okay. building into a pipe. And the call down's driving them away. Silence dropping very low. How long was Ice Blast uh, down for? It's too long. Wait. Yeah, okay. Ooh, aggressive it's maneuver here by the Beastmaster. Uh, does, I guess, scout out complexity, but we'll end up going out still. They're going to look to jump in. Lil gets the kick, the pull, the pull back in the silence. But Limp wants to turn this, and I'm not sure if VP are actually going to take this fight. Death Prophet. Good silence. Getting the Soul Siphon off currently. They will kill the Gyro, and Complexity is going to back away for the moment. Do you want to engage even further in? TP retreating out. So the the new way Very to chaotic fights. to ult with uh, Sanity Eclipse is a little bit different now, right? Like I think what you're supposed to do is hit a couple of times, accrue a couple of int, and then drop your ult towards the latter half of the fight. Yeah. To clean up, but the way I feel like at least in the last fight, Lim just drops at the beginning of the fight, which really limits the damage output. So I'm not sure whether he wanted to use that burst initially to do a quick wombo combo with uh, call down. But towards the uh, w the result of the fight, is, it felt like they didn't have enough damage. So it's, it seems like they're almost for He's pressured into using it too early because of how quickly VP killed them. They, yeah, they just have that's, so that's much fair. damage from the death problem. You might just die before you even using it. Yeah, you wait for all those orb pro procs and you may just end up dying. Good combo swap into immediate stun and silence. Oh, Snowball there, but it is going to get dragged back. The Venge in the tree line. And oh. FNG, oh, nice blink away, but the Wave of Terror finishes him off. A Hawkeye in the tree line. Sven is BKB now, though. VP on the back of that may look for some more objectives. Tier 2 bottom. It's likely Dyer's to fall here, and then the question is, is me, when do they break the base? Now. Save the ult. Seems they are. Let's go. This could be it. Dyer's for complexity if VP have their way. Maybe go for us. Swindle in the mid lane, desperately pushing Radiant's this out, but doubling. Is under he is going to retreat. Still though, you can tell, like, Plexi, they're just... 
pulling out all the tricks just to get these lanes slightly out of their side of the map. I don't know. They, they took down one T1 tower this team. Creeps might do more than the team. Radiance yeah. top tower is Let's under see if attack. if they get the range racks. Retreating out a little bit. G. Now going to re-engage. And there is, is a glyph. Dyer's Used rather early in the fight. Off. Swindle also looking to engage, but he gets thrown up in the air. G has the silence available. Does get it off on Swindles. The boulder kick not quite going to connect. Okay. You know, the, the, the buying time, waiting Dyer's out the DPL. Maybe they could go soon. Oh. Hasn't been the best ultimate as far as like raw damage output from G, but towards the tail end of it here. Now he's really getting onto the melee racks. The Necro going to work too. The boar even wants to join the fray, and they do get their first lead of racks. So a nice win Jeez. for DP Swindles. Again, it's going to take a snowball save to bring him out of this one. But a lot of damage from the Sven, who just mauls them on the Jeez. back lines. Gives them the sword. He's going to kill off the Fire Panda and maybe even the Earth Panda with already wind walking, trying to get the hell out of there. Hanskin trapped over on the side, tanks the Siphon, gets silenced up as well, and Silent continues hacking away. We'll bring down Z-Freak, might bring down Swindle too. Where's the evasion when you need it? He needs more. Run, more. Swindle. No escape. VP just squishing complexity beneath their boot. This is ugly. Oh man, complexity reminds me of the old Cloud9 where like they're so emotional as a team where you like, can just see the frustration building yeah. up and uh, they have the good strategies, they have you know good thoughts, but And they have moments where they're like, oh how do they win that fight? They've had two games now where I felt like they never really got to play a, a straight up game. The game that they wanted to play, that the game that they, they exactly drafted. like yeah. avoidable deaths, frustrating beginning, and you know then it it did seem like they made a lot of mistakes that you don't always see out of the squad, and perhaps yeah. it's you know tiredness, perhaps it's just frustration. Hard to say. But. Well, it doesn't end right. There's one more game after this. They have to play uh, was it Spirit? No, Wings. They wings. Have to play wings. wings. Which was supposed to be the game right now. Right. They call it GG. There's the GG. So VP continue their march here in Group B. They look solid in Star Ladder Season 13. Complexity, on the other hand, they've got issues. Yeah, they do. Uh, hopefully they ban Earth Street, because definitely Wings will be picking that one up as well. Earth Street now improves to be 5-0. Uh, and 0. So you think they're a spirit more than the Death Prophet? Uh, I think it's a combination of both. But Earth Spirit is a hero that really allows you to... Snowball as hard as uh, as G did. Uh, well, if you look at the stats, or Spirit, like you said, five and zero. Death yep. Prophet, I believe Nahaz was. It's like what? It's like now two and five. Actually, now. doing terribly as far yeah. as raw win rate goes. Now there was at least one game in there that I was casting that should have been a Death Prophet win, which the, the VP game, which G actually, yeah, mm -hmm. lost lost the game on, but he still had an incredible game. Yes, he did. Even in defeat, so. Well, any uh, any final thoughts here, Lumi? Uh, I need to wisdom? charge my flame for the next game. Because if the next game is going to be like this one, there, there'll be uh, there'll be hell. All um, right, we're going to go reload the flamethrower, yes. get some gasoline ready to go, guys. Then we'll come back for the final match of the day. I believe it will be Complexity taking on Wayne. Just Complexity desperately searching for their first win here on day one of Star Ladder Season 13. E-Gaming Bets. We accept bets on